last series, this one has actually probably been the most competitive. Uh, you have you have the Suns and you have the Mavericks tied up two two. Uh, home team has won every game thus far. Before we get into the actual game, I got to talk about this, and I want to ask you, Nikki, have you ever had an issue where fans of an opposing team has, like, harassed your family or friends in the stands? No, I haven't. You know, um, the closest I've gotten to it is when I played in Europe. And just in general, the fans of that team, they're just really obnoxious and just yelling things and maybe even spitting or you know stuff like that like towards the court and just yeah. making a whole lot of noise and you know stuff like that but we've I've never had anyone so close where they've said things that I can understand and also things that are directed to me or my family or anything like that or anybody in my family being in the stands and feeling disrespected or challenged I've never had that but I mean that's that's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to, to Chris Paul and his family. If you guys don't know, um, there was a fan who was uh, harassing them in the stands. Um, and it just, you know, got a little bit out of control. The fan that was was ejected from the game. Um, but we just we, we can't have stuff like that in sports. You know, a lot of these fans, they are you know, they, they get beside themselves, you know, just cause you can afford to sit, you know, on the floor or to sit court side does not mean you, you can just say and do anything that you want to not only the players on the opposing team, but the family of the players on the opposing team. You know, if, if, if Chris Paul after that game would have walked up and slapped the taste out of that, that kid's mouth, I wouldn't even be mad at him because you don't you don't go disrespecting somebody's mom in the stand. She ain't got nothing to do with the game. And on top of that, your team is winning and Chris Paul's fouled out. So you know what are you what are you doing right now? And we've seen too many of these, you know, where fans have to be removed from the stadium because they either saying something or doing something that goes above and beyond your typical bull, you trash, you know, we get, yeah, it. you know, right. when you want to roll, you expect that you're going to, you're going to have trash talkers. Don't take it to the extreme. Don't yeah. feel like you're that protected that nothing can happen to you. And you want to try something with one of these players, especially when you know that outside of this platform right here, you would not walk up to any of these guys and say or do the stuff that you guys will try when you're sitting in the stands in a situation where you know that the players cannot do anything to you because they will throw away their careers behind it. You know, and I hate to go back to the malice in the palace, but we know how that thing turned out. You know what I mean? Because fans get a little overzealous and, and they get besides themselves, you know? So y'all got to relax, fans. Yeah, I mean, for sure, you have to relax because this is just a game. And I mean, of course, there's high stakes, you know, when it comes to the game, but you can't be disrespectful. Yeah. You know, there's a thin line. It's like, OK, you know, be proud of your team and support your team and try to, like, get into the other team's head. But don't be disrespectful. You know, you put it you're doing too much. Like everybody is a person here. You know, nobody wants to feel disrespected at their job. Nobody wants to feel, you know, it's just like. It's like out I, of I, come to your, I come to your office and slap the staple on the floor. Do I do yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. It's just like disrespectful. It's, it's like, so that's the best way to possibly, you know, the best word for it. It's like, be respectful, you know, as you're doing your job in supporting your team. It's like, be respectful because these men come, go out there, they work hard. They go out there to do their job. They already have a whole lot of pressure on them to win the games, you know, pressure on themselves to do play well. And it's like, there's no need for all of the extra, you yeah. know? So it's too much. It's too, it's becoming too much and I get it. So. And I like, you know, I got it. And I got to tell, you know, for, for all of you, you internet trolls out there. Cause I, like I had a situation recently where I said, oh shoot, I must've came up. I'm making it now. Because I was getting random, you know, people, you know, talking 
messing me in my DM talking crazy to me. So I felt like I felt accomplished, you know, because of that. But y'all, you know, y'all internet trolls, y'all got to relax too. I got to say that, you know, because y'all put y'all on the same level as these unruly fans. Stop <laughs> being, thinking that the, the safety of you being behind your computer will stop things from happening to you in real life. Because when you, when you try to do the things that you do in real life, situations like, and we're going to jump around a little bit, what happened with, 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 with that gentleman on the plane with Mike Tyson who got the yeah. act that he needed because you're antagonizing this man on the plane where he's just trying to get to wherever he's going and you're doing too much. And because of that, you got your ass whipped and you needed your ass whipped because you needed to understand the ramifications of your actions. The things that you could do and say at the comfort of your home behind the computer screen, you cannot do to people in real life. It, it, is, it, it may not turn out the way that you think it will it'll turn out because not everybody is going gonna, is gonna to live their life that, like they got something to lose. They might just whip your ass. So you right. <laughs> into account, I'm glad that, that, that Mike is not going to face any charges behind that BS because obviously, you know, everybody saw this, that, that man was antagonizing Mike to the point where it's like, all right, now I got to put hands on you. You're lucky right. there's plain seats in between us and I can't beat you down like I would beat you down if you was just standing face to face with me. So I'm happy for Mike that he's not going to be in no type of trouble for that. Um, but with that being said, back to the to the matchup. Series tied 2-2. Uh, obviously, Phoenix best record in the league this season. Do you think they they close this thing out or can we can we is, you know that we're gonna get some more of that Luca magic I mean Luca is magical <laughs> so that's that's for sure um I'm rooting for the Suns because I'm rooting for Chris Paul we all know that he's a veteran in the league we all know that he's a superstar as well and and we also all know that he hasn't been to the finals I don't know in how long right I mean Basketball outside, so, huh? outside of last season. Outside of last season, yes, I'm sorry. But I mean, like, to win the finals as well, right? Yeah. Outside of last season. To win the finals and actually finish the job. So I'm rooting for him. You know, I think that he's coming to the end of his career now. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be nice to have him really go all the way. Can, we, can, we, can, we, talk about, can we talk about this? Um... The fact that James Harden and Chris Paul both played on the same Houston team, and y'all thought that you know Chris Paul was the one that should go. Meanwhile, Chris Paul is actually still playing at an MVP level, and since he, uh, James Harden has left Houston, he's actually been on a steady decline. Can I just? Put that piece of like little tidbit. First of all, we're not going to be in here dogging James Harden, okay? First of all, because James Harden, I'll put it out. There. The, I'll put it out there. He's been on a decline, but he's went to teams where he has to share his stardom. So it's no, not. No, is no, it a no, decline? No. Is it really a decline, or is it more so that he's a try to adapt to the situations that he's been put in? You go on from about thirty a game to about. Uh, 18 a game, yeah, I'd say that's a little bit of a decline. But he went to 18 with a game, with, and who was he playing with? He was playing with, with Durant and Kyrie. Exactly. Who, who both missed half of the time he was there, so his numbers should have still been good, because they both missed half of the time, so he had enough shots that he could have put up. Yeah, but that's not how, you know, when, when you have a system in basketball, you know, with the team, you have a system. Like, you run through these plays every day. You run through the system every day. We know where the ball is going. We know who's going to get the shots, who's going to get the touches. Now, if they decided in the beginning of the year when they were all there together, coach, this is the system that we're going to have. Harden, you're going to be a distributor or you're going to be a facilitator. You're going to do your, do your thing, but you mostly be trying to get it to these places. And I think that that was the assignment. I think that that's what was understood from the beginning of the year. And as a player – when your role adjusts into that mode, you really start to adjust your mindset. And when your mindset is changed from, oh, I have to get 40, oh, I have to do my thing and just score, to, oh, okay, let me get these people involved, that changes your, your attempts, that changes your, your mood, that changes the way that you play. So I believe that that was just due to him being on a, on a team with a system 
that was different from what he was used to. To be honest, that's what I believe. Well, I'll tell you one thing: if if, if James Harden looked bad and they lose to Miami in the second round of the playoffs, I'm gonna bring you right back here next week, and we're gonna have a conversation about this. All right, fine. Okay. And little... if he wins, and if he does really well and wins, then what? I'll still bring you back. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I'll apologize. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> and I will. I, I will apologize. A uh, big shout out to. No, but really, I think that that's the reason why he has a decline in his points and everything for sure. I mean, I, listen, you said I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt since you're the lady point guard. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Let you call this one one half of the Splash Sisters. I'm gonna let you. You know, I'm gonna let you rock, and we're gonna move on. I now. mean, if you think about it, KD and Kyrie, those are top ten superstars in our league right now. But am I lying or is it not? I agree. I agree. Top ten. Top ten. You know, so it's like, what can you do when you have this person on your right side, this person on your left side? I mean, you you're like basically a helper for them at that point. You know, just like they're helping for you, but they're more, they were more in demand at that time, you know, to get them the ball and whatever the case. So I'm sticking with what I'm saying and we'll talk next week. I'm letting you rock. I'm letting you rock until we see it. You know, as a matter of fact, why are you saying that? Let me let me just take a quick peek at the at the score of the game right now. James Harden, don't let me down. Because it's 118 to 83. I'm just giving y'all a live update right now. And oh your gosh, man, your man Harden got 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 uh 14 points right now, and it you know it, um, uh, actually the game is over. It's 120 to 85. Oh wow, yeah, that's and they got smoked. Uh, that's like 25 points. Yes. Wait, wait, one what do you say? 85 to 125? What would you say? 85 to 120. Okay. So the fourth yeah, quarter, like I was 39 to 19 in the fourth quarter. That that ain't yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Harden. I can't let you slide on that one with your 14 points. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna put that out there with your 14 points. I ain't gonna yeah. I missed the game. I have to watch the game. I have to see what's going on. I don't know what's going on right now. Man, I, you know, I, I, they, they got a replay. They're going to play the replay. You can watch the replay, whatever you want to do with the tapes, but I just don't think it's going to change anything. But again, I'm into uplifting the brother, so I'm going to congratulate Coach Monty Williams, uh, Coach of the Year. He is actually one of my favorite coaches, and we speak about him a lot uh, on the show just because I remember – years ago when he was coaching in um in New Orleans and uh he was just having a conversation with the with the team it was a lot of a lot of young brothers there um I believe Chris Paul was still there at the time but it was a lot of young brothers and he was just giving them life lessons and I really appreciated him talking to a group of young men about life and you know just having the right people around you and doing the right thing with your money because you know we know a lot of times we get money a lot of athletes get money and then you know everybody doesn't make what LeBron makes in his career or what Kobe made or what Steph makes, you know, everybody doesn't make that. So you kind of really have to be on point, uh, you know, with your money and, and what you're doing with it. And as a coach, that's not his job to really talk to you about that kind of stuff and give you those, those, those gems and those life lessons, you know, it's really about basketball and winning games. That's what you hired to do. And nobody cares about what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, personal life it's can you win a basketball game can you get my franchise a championship and that's it but I really respect that about uh, coach Monty Williams so congratulations to him again yo this is Teresa Weatherspoon better known as Teaspoon and you're watching real fans real talk uh-huh 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 uh-huh